All right, folks. So we're back again talking about uh, tuners. In this case, we're talking about the MFJ. This is a manual tuner. It is the model 901B. Um, and the reason we're talking about this is, is that I get some comments. Uh, people are like, well, I don't use no tuner because it induces losses. And um, that's true. So when we talk a little bit about something called insertion loss, it is any degradation or attenuation of your signal from the back of your radio to the feed point of your antenna. Now, I get that some tuners are built into your radio, so it's going to include that as well. Um, but these things uh, generate losses of your signal. Um, it's mostly uh, resistive losses, and things are lost to ohmic heat um, as a result of resistance as your signal travels back and forth. Some coax is super lossy, some isn't. That's why some folks choose to use twin or ladder line. But in this case, we're talking about tuners and the belief or the misconception, or maybe it is the appropriate conception, um, that these things uh, introduce losses on your line. And ham radio operators are extremely concerned with efficient transfer of power from a transceiver to an antenna, and they wanna make sure that their antenna radiates. So they do things like measure SWR. Um, they should be looking at uh, RF patterns and far field plots of their antenna just to make sure the antenna is radiating as expecting because your antenna can also generate ohmic uh, resistance and your signal can be lost as heat there as well and not radiated out into the atmosphere. So what we're going to do for this particular test is we're going to hook this up to one of our favorite tools, the Nano VNA. We're going to connect it to the computer via Nano, Nano VNA Saver. And then uh, we're just going to do a quick little demo of us tuning in a frequency and seeing where our insertion loss would be for a device like this. So stay tuned and we'll check it out. PCBWay's new OEM services offer a full turnkey manufacturing service that includes product design, product development, engineering validation, and printed circuit board assembly manufacturing services. PCBWay staff will help you with every step of the process, providing the support you need to get your next project started. PCBWay has expertise that will make your project a success. Go ahead and reach out to them now and see what they can do for you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we have everything set up and configured here. Don't worry, this is not going to be how we shoot the rest of the video. We are going to run this into the computer so you can see the charts and the graphs a little bit easier. And I'm gonna to try to set up a camera so we can see the knobs on the front of the tuner. But uh, I did wanna talk a little bit about how we're configured for this test. So here we have our channel zero. Uh, some folks will call it an S11 port. And what this does is it emits a signal that comes out this cable and it goes into, uh, I have it going into the transmitter side of the tuner. Uh, the S11 port can emit a signal and it can, um, it can report on the reflection or the signal that comes back into it. Channel 1 can only report on the signal uh, that, it, that it receives. It cannot emit its own signal. So what we have for Channel 1 is we have another cable that comes in and goes into the antenna side of the tuner. So signal comes in, runs through the device, comes out, goes back into the Nano VNA, and we get a reading. And this is an SWR sweep right here. But we're going to take a look at this in a little bit more detail so it is a little bit easier to read, but I wanted to show how we are set up for the test. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about what we have going on here. Um, we do have a calibrated Nano VNA connected to our computer, and we're using Nano VNA Saver as our software. And we're set up on a continuous sweep. So as I make adjustments to the tuner, you'll see them in real time on the screen. Uh, we have a sweep from 6.5 megahertz to 30 megahertz, and I get that the range of the tuner goes beyond that, but that is just where we are right now. Um, this is a demonstration. It's not a scientific thing. So when we would take a look at this, we have markers at various frequencies, and one of the ones I wanted to point out is the blue marker, which is right here. It's the third one in line. And that is pretty much on uh, what we'll call the equator, which is the dividing line between the northern and southern hemispheres of our Smith chart. And that is when we have close to resonance. And so if we look at the data for marker two over here, you can see our VSWR is 1.27. People will be like, hey, 1.3 isn't resonant. Um, but resonance is actually when you have zero reactants, when your inductive and your capacitive reactants cancel each other out. Now, the northern hemisphere of the Smith chart is inductive reactants, and the lower part is capacitive reactants. So you can see down here for marker one, 
um, it has a lot of capacitive reactants. So we're as close to resonance as I think we're going to get um, when we take a look at uh, at marker two here. Um, so that's that, that's pretty good. Now what I wanted to show is as we go ahead and we make adjustments here. So this is adjusting um, the center inductor. You can see that certain things happen and it changes. Now the reason we're doing this video is, is we wanted to talk about um, insertion loss and how much insertion loss um, something like this tuner could create. So right now with our current setting, um, our marker number two is has a VSWR of 7.4, which is not, not good. So here you can see with this adjustment, our S21 gain is negative 3.3. So it's more than 3 dB of, of insertion loss that we're seeing as a result of this. But that's because this tuner isn't appropriately adjusted. So when we go back to our setting where our VSWR is 1.2, uh, we can take a look and see our insertion loss is 0 0.108 0 0.109. Again, that's the S21 gain. Let me go ahead and turn that chart on. <clears throat> so here you can see that both the Smith chart and the, um, and the S21 gain, and that measures our loss in dB. So again, you can see here at our 20 megahertz marker, um, even higher, we have minimal, minimal losses as a result of this tuner. That doesn't mean we won't, because again, as we go ahead and we make adjustments here, um, things can things can change rapidly. So, which the moral of the story is, is that if your antenna tuner is adjusted correctly, I don't really think that insertion loss is a factor. Anyhow, thanks for watching, everybody. Totally appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.